I'm extremely uncomfortable being the story, although I've loved every minute of telling thousands of sports and news stories at KSDK over the last 40 plus years. My news director asked me to tell my story and share my opinions because she believes I have something valuable to add to the difficult conversations that are going on right now. I was probably five or six years old, growing up at 6th and Morgan in St. Charles. My parents lived there over 60 years. Playing in my backyard, I noticed there was a block party going on, and my family wasn't invited. Although we were the only black family for blocks and blocks, we had always had a friendly relationship with neighbors, always saying hello, playing with the kids around my age. So I couldn't figure out why we weren't invited, although even at age five, I knew it had something to do with skin. I remember my mother made me come in the house because I couldn't stop staring at the party. Fast forward 32 years. My daughter is about five years old. My parents, wife, brother, daughter, and I were standing outside my childhood home when some cowards drove by and yelled the N-word. My daughter, who's now a teacher, was and is smart and perceptive. She knew the adults were upset, but she didn't know why. When my mother asked what happened, I made up a story and my daughter knew I was lying and now she really wanted to know what happened. What happened was her first lesson in racism. I had to explain to my beautiful young daughter that some people won't like you because of the way you look even when they don't know anything about you. Three weeks before I proudly graduated from the world's first journalism school at Mizzou, I was hired as a weekend sportscaster at an Oklahoma City TV station. First job, top 40 TV market. I was excited. Not long after starting the job, a TV station salesman who I had never spoken to asked me if I thought I was hired because I was black, a conversation I replayed hundreds of times since 1977, wishing for a do-over because I have so much more to say to that guy. My response as a 21-year-old, why don't you ask the news director who hired me? I got the job. I'm nobody's victim of racism. I'm an educated black man in America who has succeeded despite some people and because of so many others. Like my sixth grade teacher who for whatever reason told me in front of my class, Arthur, you can be whatever you want to be. Now when you're 12, that doesn't mean nearly as much as playing softball at recess. But as an adult, I recognize the power of praise and high expectations from teachers. Once I got into J school, multiple instructors made me believe I could be successful, including the broadcast department head who made me a teaching assistant and put me in the sports anchor chair five days a week during summer school. Thank you, Lee Wilson. But even if your university honors you with a faculty alumni award, even if you're inducted into multiple halls of fame, even if you serve your community for over 40 years at your hometown TV station, win a few awards along the way, even become a mentor for big brothers, big sisters. If you look like me with dark skin, you may still be followed by security at the mall, and you're just one bad cop away from a chokehold or a knee on your neck. If not me, maybe a friend or one of my nephews. My late father saw a black man lynched. My older brothers attended segregated Franklin School in St. Charles. I'm 65 and we're talking about many of the same systemic problems we were talking about in 1954, the year I was born. That's why there are protests. That's why people of all races are demanding change in police departments, courtrooms, government, education, the digital divide, health care, life expectancy, banking, housing, voting rights. Change in the institutions and systems that determine the quality of life we attempt to lead. And when the leaders don't lead, protesters fill the void, taking a knee or marching with a sign and a megaphone to exercise their right to protest. Now, some of you watching this, I'm preaching to the choir. You already get it. And some of you are self-aware enough to know what you don't know, and you're willing to read, learn, listen, and reach out to people who don't look like you. And some of you are saying, are you still talking? Shut up and dribble. Remember that one? We let you have the NBA, black quarterbacks, and Obama. Isn't that enough? Racism isn't getting worse. It's getting recorded. Hollywood and movie theaters may have shut down because of COVID-19, but there's some serious game-changing cell phone videos, including an infamous 8-minute, 46-second cell phone video. Now that we can record it and make it go viral, it's impossible to deny it. Keep your cell phone handy. 
Medicine can taste bitter and the cure can be painful, but maybe 2020 is the year we needed to hit the reset button. Maybe we needed to stay home for a while, stop driving and polluting, pay more attention to loved ones and pets, appreciate teachers, give shout outs to first responders, talk to your neighbors, and hold the powerful accountable, those with influence and affluence. The change is underway. What side of history will you be on?